Praise the Lord. Welcome to Video Church. We've been getting ready for the new year. Maybe you have too. Maybe you enjoyed the holidays, meaning Christmas, Kwanzaa, Boxer Day, you know, all the days that go on, Hanukkah, during this season, not just one reason, like we, some Christians like to say, the reason for the season is Jesus. Well, yes and no. I mean, I like to enjoy Santa Claus for Santa Claus. I enjoy Easter for Easter. I enjoy the bunny for the bunny. I enjoy all these different things according to what they are called and according to what they are for. Christmas has a lot attached to it. So I enjoy the nativity for the nativity. I enjoy the celebration of the realization that God had come into the world in his only begotten son, that he being the son of God was conceived and born of a virgin and behold, the angels came declaring the glorious gospel to all of us, the great news that a savior was born. Now, I like that. I like the reality of the fact that we can enjoy that as much as I enjoy the fact that I can have a tree or have a Hanukkah, which is a deviation of the menorah. But knowing facts, that's why I can enjoy all of these things together without separating each and every one of them separately and calling one good or one bad. God uses them. So, what would I do to say to all of these things that are all incorporated sometimes in one day, sometimes in a week, sometimes in a month, sometimes in a holiday season? I would say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> you see, I don't have a problem rejoicing. I like that kind of stuff. Rejoice and be glad. Behold, Lord unto you. You know, all that kind of good stuff. The bad stuff I don't like to talk about. But I have a tendency to bring that up because in order to have facts, you have to identify the lies sometimes. Or in order to have good, you got to see the bad. How would you know the difference if you did not know the truth or the reality of what God is saying and God is revealing? Now, coming up to the new year, I have that same issue. You see, I still have this problem with the good and the bad. I'm not looking back to see, hey, yeah, well, look at what happened in 2016, or looking forward and going, hey, look how good it's going to be. I got news for you. It ain't going to get better. It's going to get worse. You see, here's the symbol I like. You see these two thumbs, one going up, one going down? That which is good or godly is going to go up. That which is not is going to go down. In other words, 2017 is going to bring to us the fulfillment or the partial fulfillment of the scripture that Jesus spoke and said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Well, I got news for you. I've been doing this a long time. You can tell me that your revival that you said didn't come back in the Jesus movement, which it, when it really did come, that you still think it's going to come, you know, that you're going to keep telling me these numbers, or that you think that somehow what's going on with these national broadcast revivals is saving thousands of people. I got some good news. I got some bad news. What God has said is true. Many are called, few are chosen. The bad news is if you added up all these revivals that everybody claims salvation numbers or dedications or affirmations of faith, we'd be saved four or five times over, really. Because if you added the numbers, then you'd have to say, well, okay, this number of people said they got saved and this revival said they got saved and this revival said this and this and this and you add them all up. Wow, America's 100% dynamic, right on, born again Christians. Bad news is, it ain't happening. 
You see, there's this concept that evangelists know somewhat. There's this idea that politicians have realized all of a sudden about polls. And there's this other concept about what's going on with the God of this world. You see, Satan doesn't want to let go of what's going on in the world. He wants to influence it and cause the confluence of many varieties of distractions to cause you to look at, see, evaluate, get involved in, be a part of, and be totally distracted from looking up. What can I say? God said that there's a time when we can work, but there's a time when we can't work. The coming season, the coming year of most Gentile, most non-Jewish kind of evaluation of time, calling it 2017, is a separation time. You're going to have to learn how to endure with your faith. Because if you're one of the few, and I'm not trying to you know, separate you from other people, I'm just saying God said it, so you do it. But hey, if you're one of the few that's seeking to follow after Jesus, it's going to get harder. You're going to be tempted, not above that you're able, but there will be with the temptation a way to escape that you'll be able to bear it that you don't need to go get involved in, you know, like uh, the current administration that's moving into the White House that's going to supposedly save the world. I got news for you. If my salvation starts off and is built upon a lie, it ain't going to get any better. It's going to get worse. If my salvation is somehow the restoration of a America I never heard of before, I got news for you. It ain't going to happen the way you think. My confidence, my salvation is placed in the realization that I today must hear his voice. I today must know it's the day of salvation. I today must be saved in order to be saved. In other words, I can't postpone, you know, like getting rid of all my secret sins. I can't postpone, like, you know, dumping all my transgressions. I can't keep, you know, kind of like riding the fence of which way I'm going to go. Because I'm going to tell you a fact. In 2017, God is going to start confirming the direction you go. God is going to not allow you to see the truth. Now, some people are going to have a hard time with that because they're going to say, well, God doesn't do that. God always shows you. Hold on. The Spirit of God will not always strive with man. The Spirit of God is the only one who gives us ears to hear. The Spirit of God is the only one who gives us eyes to see. The Spirit of God is the only one that gives us the spirit of understanding because that's part of his nature. God's nature is he's a spirit. Part of that nature of God is the Spirit of God, who is a person, an entity, and is part of what some people call the Trinity, other people call the triunity, other people call God, and we don't know what that means. Well, yeah, I agree with that. You know, Elohim, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, I could say Trinity and go, yeah, but don't give me that triangle that says, you know, is but isn't, but who, whatever, greater, not what, you know, all that kind of thing that they do. Uh, when it comes to God, I let God be God, and he said I can't understand him, so I accept that. I know that he's Father, Son, and Spirit. Other than that, hey, <laughs> What he says goes, and that's all I know. But the reality of what you don't know is that there's a time where God pulls back and lets man literally hang himself. Meaning that you get enough rope, you'll hang yourself. You'll get grace to go out and lose your place. Yeah, seriously. You see, grace was given to you in order to allow you the opportunity to be free to choose Will you, in your freedom, choose to follow the living God or make up your own God? In America today, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, I'm not the only one that knows this, but you need to read it for yourself. Go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and tell me who Jesus is. Because you see, there's these ideas floating around by pastors and teachers and religions and denominations that somehow Jesus wasn't preaching love your enemies that he was preaching 
love those that you can love, but, you know, kill the ones you can't. You know, like kind of, what do you do with a terrorist? Ah, oh, you kill them, of course. What do you do? Join the army in order to serve God? Join the military? Buy a gun? Kill those God sent for you to die for? You see, Christian in the original word meant die for or be like the one who died for the world. They were killing off Christians by martyring them, by setting them on fire, by feeding them to lions. And they were singing about it. They were dancing and joy-filled because they said, Oh, glory to God, we get to die like Jesus. And the Roman guards, the Roman centurions, the Roman procurators, all of Rome, matter of fact, they were so amazed. They said, they're like Christ. And the word like Christ is Christian. They're Christians. That's how it came about. They're back in Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus. I think it was Corinth. Corinth. But that means we who have enjoyed so much God shed his grace upon thee, America, we have a responsibility and accountability to step up or step back. You see, first love isn't about the idea that, oh, well, I got you know, in love with Jesus back, you know, 20 years ago, and yeah, you know, I'm a Christian now. You know, I got my family, I got my home, I got my cars, I got my kids, I got my ministry, I got my house, I got my, you know, retirement, my 401k, my IRA, you know, and now I got a new president. Is that what God said about first love? You see, it's not about first love anymore only, it's about are you going to endure until the end? Has Jesus visited you lately and said, are you in the faith? Have you examined yourself to see if you're following Jesus as he said or following Jesus as man has said? You see, in America, we have a bad, bad, bad rap going about God. Somehow, we've taken and we keep changing the image of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man. Romans warned us about that. Don't lower Jesus to the standard of man and put a sword in his hand and that he's going to kill people. That's not God. God is able to deliver you anytime, anywhere, any place. I've stood in front of guns that didn't go off. I've been, at the same time, beat up because God allows suffering. God allows death. You will die. I got news for you. America doesn't get out from under God. But rather, all human humanity, all humanity will perish eventually. This corruption we are in, our flesh, must put on incorruption. A new body that God is fashioning for us. Not man has made with God to become our body and flesh. No, actually our soul and our spirit is going to go back to God to either be commended or condemned. Yes, there is a lake of fire, and yes, hell will be cast into it. But before you get to the lake of fire, you'll wind up in hell suffering. And then the lake of fire, eternally separated from God. That's why there are people that say, well, what about this lake of fire? Well, what about this you know, outer darkness? What about this, that, and the other thing? You really want to discuss it? I can. I asked those questions of God. I did not want to be left out. I did not want to be left behind. I read the parable of ten virgins and said, oh my God, what's the difference? And I looked around and said, holy cow, if this is true, then everybody's getting raptured. And I went, well, that can't be true. If two are in the field and one shall be taken, that means something made the difference between the two. It's not just a metaphor and a simile. It's not just some kind of like, oh, Jewish proverb. You know, like they like to write off. I asked Jews about that and they said, no, that's not what we do. And I went, well, then how come the Christians are saying that's what Jews do when they're writing it in the Old Testament or writing about Proverbs? Well, uh, you know, Christians make up all kinds of things about what Jews do. And so, being Jewish, I went, God, boy, what's the deal? And God said, listen to me. Follow thou me. Now, I know for some of you, you know, you're going to go, well, okay, I do. And I go to church. And then I listen to what the pastor says, and then if I think it's right, I go with him. Okay, good, you know, 
Be careful who you listen to. That's what I'm saying. All right. Hello. I can't tell you every pastor out there is right. I can't tell you even that Calvary chapels are all right or all wrong. I can tell you I know some pastors individually. I would say, yeah, you know, cool. You know, I'm up there with you. But I can tell you that there's some Calvary chapels that I'd go, man, I would not tell anyone out of their mind to go there or in their right mind. I went there and I went, you know, that just isn't going to get you anywhere near Jesus. Sorry. As much as they'd like to imitate, they don't have that personal ability to relate. Meaning that if the Holy Spirit has an anointed and appointed a person, someone's going through the motions. And no offense, devotion is going through the motions unless there's some kind of emotion in it which brings us to a closer relationship with God. So 2017 is going to bring us to a place of separation. Yeah, not on day one. It's going to go like this. Just one degree of separation. One degree, we'll call it. One degree that by the end of the year, 360 days later, is 360 degrees of separation. That's the opposite direction. Well, 180 is, but 360 is going in full circle. That applies to going circular instead of going upward. Because really, even one degree of separation, unless it's in elevation, you're still going to miss the mark. So how can we rest assured and be assured of our salvation? According to the five scriptures, you know, that we're given, we're told these, you know, five scriptures. If we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us well in our righteousness. If any man be a Christ, he is new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. God so loved the world that he gave only begotten Son, no other believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um... If any man lack wisdom, let us ask the Father who the brain is now begins to talk to man liberally. And trust the Lord with all thy heart, and not thine own understanding, and all the ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. That was the original, original five scriptures that navigators, campus crusade for Christ, just about all the people around during the Jesus movement were learning to have an assurance of. Five of them. Assurance of answer prayer, assurance of salvation, assurance of guidance, assurance of forgiveness, assurance of whatever the last one is. That wisdom. That being said, I can tell you memorization isn't realization. you got to apply it and let God have at it in making it real in your life. Our ministry lives off of and lives in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Be not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And then the second one being, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prays up. So we personally not only know that Jesus speaks, we know that God speaks, we know that God directs, we know that God detects, we know that God reveals, we know that God is meant to be in us so that he would whisper in us to tell us left, right, up, down, sideways. You know what Jesus said. I don't have to tell you what he said about loving your enemies. You know what the truth is. You just like when somebody compromises it for you because it makes it comfortable. It makes it easy. It makes it something you can do on your own. I got news for you. On your own is what that is and that'll send you to hell. Jesus said that there's a certain amount of truth and reality that's going to happen to you that you don't see it coming unless you really were doing what you're supposed to do. And that is to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. Meaning that you should, you could, and you must seek to follow after the Lord your God. You don't choose to turn to the left. You don't choose to turn to the right. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you hear what is being said to you, you should go home and get it right. You should go home and begin to understand what it is, how it is, and what God is saying to you. If you do, then you listen only to what He is telling you. In other words, you could hear something that sounds good, that feels good, that maybe you, know, you had a question about, that you can ask a pastor, you can ask a leader, you can ask a 
Google it. You can probably look it up. You can do a lot of things. But one thing people forget to do is why not ask he who wrote it? Why not take the time? Why not make the time to seek the Lord while he may be found? To appreciate the fact that if you commit something unto the Lord, he will bring it to pass. How about taking and making the realization of all that God has said is true? That there is a living, breathing, huge entity, greater than you are, bigger than you are, smarter than you are, and able to answer you if you would ask. Jesus said, look, God loves you. God wants to be for you, in you, and deliver you, and take you to a place where you have a relationship with him even greater than I do. Well, he didn't say greater than he does, but he said greater works than he does, we could do. Now, I'm not going to go too far on that one, but I'm going to say this. You're supposed to know the difference between someone talking about God and someone knowing God. You see, if you know God, you know when you're wrong and you know when you're right. Because even when you don't know, you ask God. And though it's uncomfortable, he doesn't beat you yet. He doesn't, you know, take you to the, you know, whipping block and, you know, kill you. In fact, he says, good, before you get to that place, seek my face and I will deliver you. But if you wait until God has to really beat you to get your attention, has to, you know, cause all these circumstances to come upon you, to cause you to turn to him, then the reality is, yeah, that's not a good place to be. That's not the exception to the rule where, you know, everybody gets to go, you know, with their own flow that they just automatically get, you know, this smooth, kind of like uh, Trump's idea of, you know, America great. I'm sorry, the road is not paved with gold. Rather, it is a cross to bear that we are all called to go there. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. How we do that is by asking God, what's my cross? What do I got to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? Now, I get it. You know, in America, you know, we, we have taken the time to go our own way. We have gotten our paneled houses, like Israel was warned about. We have gotten our blessings, like Israel was warned about. We have gotten our nation to a place where we're all employed. We all get to do what we want to do. We all can pretty much determine our own destiny, like Israel. But like Israel, when Israel got chastised, when Israel got slapped down, when Israel was finally removed from the blessing. Wow. Look at Israel today. They came back from being outside the land to being brought back to the land. And right now, I got news for you. People that live in the land don't believe in God. I live there. There's some, you know, there's a kind of like a a Jew here, a Jew there, a few people here and there, you know, getting saved. And once in a while, you know, a few people, you know, leaving being saved, you know. What can I say? It's your choice. Paul talked about there comes a time when there would be anathema, cursed, Maranatha, he's coming. Anathema, Maranatha was a, a greeting. And that he who is accursed be accursed, that he who is blessed be blessed. And the fact is, we're starting 2017. We're moving into an area unfamiliar with what I'm used to saying about Happy New Year. I'm not looking at New Year's as being happy. I'm looking at New Year's as being a choice. You see, I personally believe you should be like, whoa, wow, and getting on your knees and seeking what God wants you to do. Because starting through 2017, you need to be ready to go home anytime. Meaning, heaven, if it's your home, be prepared to be there. What good is it gonna do you to have, you know, all this worldly knowledge and no knowledge of the heavenlies or the heavenly realm or even Jesus himself? I mean, pardon me, but if Jesus walked up to you, would you recognize him? <laughs> I mean, come on now, in this world we don't recognize him, so how are we going to say we'll recognize him when we get there? Even John was shocked out of his shorts and had to have an angel tell him, Hey, don't worship me. Stand up. What will you do? Should you be gone, drop dead from a heart attack? 
What would happen if you be gone and you're raptured? What would happen if you get hit by a car and died? In any other way of death being changed from this dimensional reality to suddenly, oh my God, I'm in the presence without saying presence. I hate that word now because people have abused it to make it something else. But being in the very same place as God, the presence of God. Woe is me, I am undone, is what I feel. And that's what I saw as others have said the same thing when they go to heaven, except for those that are writing books about it and selling you know, seminars. They just go, oh, hey, I'm here. Everybody else that went to heaven felt like they didn't belong there and they needed something done. And we see that in John's case, you know, an angel went and took a fiery ember, you know, from the altar of God. And in other people's cases, we see something similar to that, purification. What can I say? I like to say, people, you know, be careful about these stories of being in heaven and seeing your loved ones. Uh, that may be more fanciful than reality. So, my looking at, my preparation, my getting ready for teaching, you know, New Year's Eve service, but also my preparation of being aware that 2017, we start something that I've waited all my life for. From 2017, January 1st to probably 2034, if I live that long, and if Jesus tarries that long, those are the peak years of anyone's idea of probability of when Jesus will return. Meaning that either the rapture or the second coming will happen. I mean, I have no doubt that the rapture will happen. I just have a doubt that so many will go. I'm pretty confident by all scriptures that <laughs> there aren't that many that are going to be raptured, but there's a lot more that are going to go into the Great Tribulation period. Jesus said it. You want to know more about it, read the letters to seven churches and follow accordingly. There was an idea that sometime during denominationalism, they made it into some kind of you know era age, you know, where it was like, okay, that was during that era and that was during that. I like to say that if scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction, righteousness, that means all of it's applicable now as well as applicable back then. So it's kind of like a was, is, and shall be. Same thing that's said in the book of Revelation, thing, same thing that Jesus said, and same thing that God describes God. I am that I am it simply means that I was, I is, and I ever else shall be. It's just kind of like the whole shtick fits perfectly if you listen to what God is saying. So, more than happy New Year, we're thinking sober New Year. And I don't mean not drinking. I mean sober-minded. I mean thinking about where am I at with my relationship with God? Where am I going with my relationship with God and what can I do about my relationship with God? In other words, I'm telling you to get self-centered and ecocentric for at least one day starting January 1st, 2017 and by the end of the day realize you need to do something and that's pray. You need to have a long conversation with God and a realization that none of us are there. Matter of fact, most of us have screwed up when we thought we were there and arrived and we've done what supposedly God wanted us to do. If you don't look around and see billions going to hell and it doesn't move you, then I don't think you've done what God wanted you to do. I think you need to stop, think it through, and turn back towards the living God. To turn again towards Jesus. To not just experience the presence, as people say now, and worship, and are worshiping worship or worshiping the feeling, but what if your own feelings can deceive you? What if even God said he would send deception on the whole world that they should believe a lie? Then I suggest to you that we need to be more serious about our relationship with God than we are about our relationship with our wife, our dog, our cat our neighbors, our friends. I mean, even today, right now, the doorbell rang twi three times, I think. I'm busy. I'm sharing with you. I'm declaring the word of the Lord. I know God is there. I know God is here. I know God is with you and with me. But God is seeking for us to turn back, not the clock, to return to our first love, not somehow create some you know, phony 
you know, rededication ceremony, but really to repent. God is calling us to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, it's that soon. Jesus is coming sooner than you think. He's right around the corner. He's knocking at your door. As a matter of fact, you probably, if you stop, could hear him speak. God doesn't stop speaking. You just stop listening. So frankly, may I say unto you, don't be surprised if you see things beginning to veer off. And I don't mean to the left or the right. I mean up or down. Things are either going to get closer to God or farther away. And a lot of it's going to look like nice, quote, Christian religion. Because after all, the Christian religion picked, supposedly, Mr. Trump as their candidate. Some Christian pastors and leaders picked Mr. Trump as their representative. And in the midst of it all, he had said, and they still accepted it, and they didn't chastise him or contradict him. I could kill someone and still get elected. I am this, that, or the other thing. And he, you know, all the quotes are there. He doesn't deny them even. He doesn't play them down. He doesn't even say, that was then, this is now. Be careful. We have reached that tipping point. We've reached that definition of delineation, meaning that there's a separation beginning to happen. I don't say run away from your church or give up on your pastor or your friends or your neighbors. No. But you'll see people are going to be doing things you don't want to do. So don't do them. If you want to do them, be fully persuaded. Because the Bible says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own heart. I mean, Bottom line is, if you're not going to stand before God in grace and mercy and forgiveness and the work that Jesus has done for you, then you're going to stand before God in judgment by your standard of judgment. He'll judge you by your own standard and you'll fail because nobody lives up to their own mouth. Nobody lives up to their own declarations. They don't. I know I'm one of them. You are too. I mean, I don't have to go very far to see how the reality of if somebody sets a standard, you can't meet it. Shoot, make a New Year's resolution and see how fast you break it. That's what we mean by the standard. You can't do it. You can't do it even with the help of the Holy Spirit because God may not want you to do it. That's the point. The reality of salvation is this realization and acknowledgement of a constant relationship that God is speaking to you, you are speaking to God, and the two of you are getting closer and closer because Jesus said it, this is eternal life, that they should know me and know him who sent me. Anybody that says you can't know God is a liar. Anybody that says you can't know Jesus is a liar. Eternal salvation is that, that they should know me and know him who sent me. Think about that. Make that a part of your New Year's resolution and you'll find yourself in absolution of all sin because God will eventually take you to the place where you not only will know him, you will see him.